first. And I see people doing this wrong a lot. You can dodge these longbow men by moving in a zigzag pattern. You got to dance with them. At least that's better than going sideways without cover. Just a little hard if there's two of them, but then they always kind of suck. Second, you can press F10 to hide your hut. Nice for taking screenshots or realizing that your aim actually really sucks. Third, if the game gives you eight smoke grenades, you're gonna throw eight smoke grenades. Especially early on, secondary steals solid damage and the corrosion is really nice. Don't worry about running out of grenades. There's more pot in this game than in the city park at midnight. Fourth, if you've gambled all your soul essence on the magic mushroom man, seriously, you can gamble all your soul essence, you can just give up and get all essence back. Fifth, don't die. Like, damage reduction is really important. If you go full on berserk mode, like most people, you're probably dead before the last boss. I mean, do you really need 600 dual edge stacks? The higher the difficulty, the less damage you want to take. And if you're new, get those talents first. Sixth, if you didn't know, every parkour has a secret chest hidden somewhere. Also, you can cheese this parkour by jumping on this pole. Seventh, speaking of parkour, movement speed depends on weapons, so you can always switch to your foundry instead of jumping around with a whole freaking minigun. Eighth, you'll always edge a Gemini on a weapon that is either level 5 or already has 4 inscriptions, so maybe you can save some buck. Ninth, you can adjust lots of cool stuff in the settings, like a different crosshair color if you're aiming at enemies or excluding the foundry from weapon swapping. You can also max out your field of view like a real gamer. Tenth, corrosion deals more damage to armor, lightning to shield and fire to health. But since one of your weapons is usually ridiculously more of power than the other, you can pretty much ignore this in most cases. Eleventh, but what you shouldn't ignore is what the different elemental effects do. Burning deals 20% of hit damage once per second and lasts 5 seconds like all elemental effects, but it doesn't stack. So it's just a freaking scam on a fire dragon. Shock instantly deals 50% of hit damage to all nearby enemies and makes them take 10% more damage. It's really strong. Corrosion just halves enemies movement speed. So burning is only good on high damage weapons, shock is just amazing and well, corrosion just makes slow. Twelfth, weapon upgrades don't scale well. They always add the same amount so level 20 weapon is only 60% stronger than a level 10 and it gets worse the higher you go. It's much more important to focus on good inscriptions at high levels, especially on weapons like the demon lore which can get up to 990% damage boost anyway. 13th, arsonists have a barrel which you can make go boom. Especially with freeze from the cat you can kill these big chunguses, chungai, whatever, it kills them easily. 14th, fusion effects are a thing and they are really strong. Like if you trigger two effects, they add a new one as shown in this image, which I definitely didn't copy of the steam guide. It's a good one by the way. Manipulation makes enemies attack themselves, which is actually pretty nice. Kinda hated on it last time, but it's still completely useless on bosses. Combustion just goes boom. Like just get a dual fang on cat and you'll see. Extra 200% damage explosions go brrrr. Miasma is huge damage over time and spreads a little. Completely bust and single player with cat. Like 12% max HP each second and you can have up to 9 stacks of it. It's so goddamn ridiculous. 15. Miasma is actually worse in multiplayer. The more players the worse it gets. So instead I would just go full on explosive cat, but it's still broken enough to be a viable strategy. 16. When you share elemental effect with a Gemini, the percentage chance matters. So a flowing light would give you a separate 50% chance each hit, but a thunderclap glove only 5%. Additionally, it will share the elemental advantage. So corrosion and lightning deal extra damage to shield and armor on both your weapons. It's easily the best Gemini in most cases. 17. There's a not well like boss that creates homing tornadoes. Unbeknownst to a lot of people apparently, those tornadoes will disappear when they hit a sand trap. Well, it took me a couple of fights myself to figure that out. 18. Lucky shot is essentially the same as a damage increase, so a 25% chance means you have a 25% chance to deal double damage. 125% means 25% chance for triple damage or 75% for just double. This is what makes all the funny colors. But 300% is the cap, so if everything is red, more lucky shot chance is completely useless, but you rarely ever reach that limit. 19. There's a staggering mechanic. Most explosive weapons, swords, combustion, arg, just read the list yourself. Stagger cancels attacks, freezes enemies and knocks them back for a short period of time. You can only trigger it every 5 seconds per enemy. 20. You gotta know all the weapons. Each weapon is unique and you should read its description. This gives every weapon a playstyle it's good at, except Frenzy Chuck of course. Mastering weapons is the best way to get better at the game. Now I just happen to have a 17 minute video that teaches you about all the weapons. 